so you no longer need yeah, this line. I can yeah, delete it. Okay. Yeah, you can delete that. Okay, so let's try select open curve. So it's still adding four of these curves, as you see right here, right? Yes. So it looks like there's some issue, maybe some duplicates. So you got to go ahead and fix those duplicate geometries. So I'm just basically uh, trying to merge. You can see there's a gap right there. We'll have to fix that in Rhino. So these are basic curve editing that you may have to do in Rhino to fix them. Yes. Okay, I'll join this together. It says join to two open curves. Okay, one open curve. So it looks like we have a little gap in here, right? Yeah, it's a gap there. You can join with a line or you can extend that one to there. Yep, I can do a, a line here. Okay, would that be good for Perfect. now? All right. Yeah. So let's go ahead and check again for open curves. So what we are doing right now is still, you know, uh, you can see again you have some issues in here, right? Yes can see those verticals are probably double line. Yep. So I just did a close curve command in Rhino to close it. So now if you do a select open curve command in Rhino again, okay, it's still finding an open curve right here. Okay, this is the one. You can, you, yeah, you can delete that one, yeah. Okay. For now, we'll just clear it out. Okay. All right. Yes. So let me go back and make these layers visible here. You had some inside scribe lines or maybe some markers in here, right? Yes. Okay, so here's what we're going to do now. We want to nest these into a sheet. So we need to know the sheet size. It looks like you had some rectangular shapes in here. I can take a measurement one on one of these, analyze distance. So that's about 300 inches by 72 inches. Is that correct? Uh, let's do 20, 20 by 20 by six. Okay. So what I'll do is oh, actually, I'll take no, all of 20, these. 20 by 5. 20 by 5, sorry. Okay, so it's going to be 20, 20 inches five. long by 5 inches wide? No, uh, 20 feet long by uh, five, five, inches, feet. Uh, 5 feet wide. Okay, all right. So here's uh, what I'm going to do. Uh, uh -huh. Just to make it easier, I will move this closer to the origin. Yes. Okay? I'll move a point right here. I'll say move that to 0. So we'll just place it closer to the origin right there, okay? Okay. And looks like they're all in one plane, so which is good. So now I'll define, I'll make a new layer just to define our sheet. And you said you want to go, uh, the sheet size, you want it to go uh, 20 feet. Would 20 it be on the X or would it be on the Y? Uh, on the X. Okay, so 20 times 12 is 240. Uh huh. And then 5 60. times 12 is 60. So that would be the sheet size we created. I'm going to go to the nest module. We'll pick true shape nesting. We're going to use select sheets. And we can say select the curve. I'll pick this as the sheet. And then I can specify a thickness or quantity uh, of the sheet. We can do that later. We'll go back into the parts to be nested, and I can click on select parts. I can do a window selection in here, select all of these as the parts, okay? Okay. And then once you make a selection, you press right click to accept it. And now since you have uh, you know, open lines, open curves in here, they're gonna be treated as separate parts here. So in order to treat them, everything inside the exterior boundary is one, we use this checkbox in here called use for sign making and engraving. So it's going to group everything inside the exterior shape as one part. So right now we are down to like 33 parts as you see right here. So if I pick this, it'll highlight the corresponding geometry for you. Okay? Okay. And if you go select one of these here, you'll notice that this is treated as one part and everything inside that is treated as a, a child to the parent. Okay? Yes. So it'll maintain the same uh, topology and uh, it'll maintain the same, uh, you know, features for you. That the relationship will be the same when you select use for engraving and sign making. It's going to treat everything inside the exterior shape as one component, or one part. Okay? So the next step is basically to specify 
Um, the orientation step, so you could choose any orientation. So I can leave it as 90 or I can choose 45. So any orientation of 45 degrees you can use to fit the parts into the sheet. And then you specify the nesting parameters. So this would be the distance between adjacent parts. What is the minimum distance you'd like to maintain between each part based on the size of the tool that you're going to be using for it, right? Correct. So if you're going to be using a half an inch router bit to cut it, then I would leave at least a minimum half an inch, or I could say maybe 0.6, for example, right? Okay. And then distance from the edge of the sheet to the part, you, you know, could be as little as 100 thousandths or 50 thousandths, the minimum distance, so you don't have a factory edge being left. Uh, one inch is going to be? From the edge of the sheet, you want to leave one inch around, all the way around? One inch. Uh-huh. One inch, okay. And now if I pick estimate number of sheets, the system will automatically determine how many sheets you will need to basically fit all of these parts. So right now we have an estimate of five sheets. If you need one of each part to be fitted into the sheet, you need a total of five sheets. I'm gonna update the sheet. Now I'm gonna choose execute nest. So in this process, it's gonna find the best optimal solution to fit the parts into your sheet. So it's computing, and you will notice that if any of the parts were not nested, it's going to identify them here. So this line was not nested, so it'll identify the parts that were not nested in here. You can see right there. So if they're self-intersecting or if they're right on the edge, it'll fail to nest those parts right in here as you see it, okay? And also, this part, it failed to nest, so maybe it was not a closed or there was some issue with the part, okay? Okay. So it tells you the part that failed to nest in here. And we can go back and take a look and see, you know, or we can, you know, fix geometries. But here you can see that, you know, the process of nesting right in here. Okay? Perfect. So once it's nested, you go down to, it says commit nest. You can say create a separate layer for each nested sheet. And then you can do a commit nest. It's going to create four, or in this case, five sheets, and they're stacked on right on top of one another. So I can basically, you can see I'm hiding the, you know, the layers in here. So you have your first sheet, your second sheet, sheet number three, sheet four, and then sheet five. Okay? Okay. So let's consider the first sheet in here, right? Any questions so far? No, it's, it's pretty, pretty good, pretty explanatory. Okay. Now we can also export, we could have exported these as separate files. We could have done that as well. So for example, if I go back in here uh, to, when I do execute nest, So after executing the nest, I can go down here to commit nest. Instead of outputting it in the same file, I can specify a path where I want to export this to. And for example, I could say I want to put it on my desktop. I will create a new folder. Okay. I'll select this. And then when I pick export, it's going to export these to the folder I chose. So if I go to my desktop, I will be able to see the sheets I just exported right here. Oh, okay, yes, sir. So I exported yeah. each sheet to a separate Rhino 3DM file. Now let's go ahead and instead of exporting it here, we, into the same file, you can export them each sheet to a separate file. Now let me go ahead and save this out. I'm going to do a save, or I could do a save as. I'll just call it test one, revision one. Okay. So let me go ahead and open up the first file. So this is the first file right in here. As you see, we have the first sheet, right? Sheet of parts. Yep. Yeah. We're now ready to program 
toolpaths for each of these. So we switch from the nesting module to the mill module. 